Jeep stuff. Oh yeah. Following our friend Chris's visit, you know, he came in with a engine, two axles, a maintenance guide or book, and a bunch of questions. <laughs> so when we had pulled that engine out of here, you know, we had that clutch and transmission issue. And then we had uh, another issue of this being a later model chassis with a physically bigger engine. It's taller, so the valve mm -hmm. cover in the stock setup is not going to fit that Jeep body. Yeah, you'll so see. The M38A1 is this. It's a later one, where the CJ2 is the earlier body of the actual flat fender Jeep. This, this chassis doesn't belong to a flat fender Jeep. It's a little rounder. We did a lot of research. A because lot of figuring my out. My first time, you know, okay, no mechanics, etc. But each vehicle is pretty specific, right? I didn't know that uh, Jeep has all kinds of cool stuff going for it. <laughs> no question. And who is it uh, that we talked to? Your friend? Um, Big the, Tire Garage. Uh, yes. Another I Ian. Too. Yeah. The other, other, other Ian. If you don't know <laughs> Ian Johnson, you should check him out. I met him years ago. We were just talking on the phone about this at SEMA. He had a whole entourage. Like he's a freaking, mm. he's a famous guy. You he's know a bad, a bad, you know what's it. So I took a little time to talk with him and a few other people. And they're all like, yeah, dude, Jeeps, just go with it. It's cool. It's a lot of fun. So that's what we're doing. We're just yeah. going with it. So there's three Ian's that there's, are... There's a trifecta in the, the current configuration. Mm. Uh, he has Big Willie Jeep. And uh, we are friends with him, and he lives in Arizona, where he and Tan, right? Yeah, north of Phoenix, as yeah. I understand. And he has a website, Big Willie Jeep. I'm going to put it up on the thing, on the yeah. video. Right yeah, we met him out at this party in the desert. Yeah. So cool he cat. makes uh, seats and all the cushions and stuff for the Jeep. So he's gonna hook, he had reached out to me. And it's going to hook me up or hook us up with that. We have and a few different people we're collaborating with. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be uh, putting the link to his website and check him out. He makes some really cool Jeep stuff. He's a Jeeper. He has a uh, Big Willy Jeep. It's What is it called? Big Willy? Big Willy. It shoots fire. I'm going to put it next to Ian. <laughs> it shoots fire. <laughs> Not even a Jeep, but it's awesome. He's yeah. into the flat fender Jeeps, and he was like, oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, dude, like, I'm going to put in a big block with a manual shift. going to be like a drag race Jeep. He's like, no. So he diverted that plan. We're going fairly stock. Yes. Little subliminal messages of custom here and there. Yes. But back to Chris. Our front axle was all jacked up, so this one bolted right back in. It's a little stiff in the bearings. We're going to have to get into that. I was just fussing while Jamie went back inside. But I got the tire rolling. The bearings need to be changed for sure. So, yeah, that's where we're at. That steering box is junk. So that's, that's out. Uh, but the axle, back in, bolted in, factory, perfect. He brought the matching axle to the front. And the issue was he had taken out... This setup, the axle and the hub for his project. So he's like, yeah, you could have this whole axle. It's good, but you're going to have to pull the axle out of your donor and stuff it in there. So I did all that. It fit perfect. It was kind of an adventure with the puller to get this thing off. Where is the puller? Um, yeah, look at this. So, you know, heavy duty. If you saw the other episode, or actually we didn't even, we're not no, going to film we didn't, that. No, we didn't. I didn't air it because so, we hit a dead end. We yeah. didn't the puller. I had a regular little gear puller. I was trying to pull that freaking thing off and heck no it's not gonna happen so he's like no dude i got the tool you just bang it pops it right off yeah, you said that's like the original it's old, sure. yeah. so cool deal you can see here the taper hopefully got it. see what you got like i'm familiar with volkswagens and this is spline there's like a lot of grooves in it this only has one keyway but it's tapered it's thinner here and it gradually gets wider and that thing just you impact wrench that on that's what holds the whole kit in place. So real straightforward swap. Uh, I got all these bolts loose because we're going to get in there. Uh, it's got some crust in there. So uh, I'm going to take it outside, hit it with the pressure washer in there, clean it all out, dry it out, and then put new juice inside. So yeah, we broke a couple of the U-bolts trying to get this thing apart. 
So I have them on order. It's weird, this company that sells these G parts. I ordered online. It says, yeah, package of four, right? So one arrives. <laughs> and then there's three more tracking numbers. So there's going to be four separate oh, deliveries. Right. So I'm going to bolt it in with two old ones just to roll it for today. We're waiting on the rest of that kit. Okay. All that being said, we're going to stick this axle in here. We're going to get, oh, I got four tires and wheels. <gasps> so we're going to roll those in and introduce them. And then put this thing under the body and take a look at the differences between the M38A1 and the CJ2. And then we'll tell everyone our surprise. All right, so I'm going to do a little moving around with these heavy things. Because I don't want that to tip over when I take one of these off. I left the uh, leaf springs down on the floor for the assembly of this. Because, man, did I wrestle that taking it apart. But uh, it's just like my old days power lifting, you know? <laughs> Well, you are a Batista in another, another life. <laughs> I've had more people think that I'm Batista than think that I'm full custom Ian. Let's put it that way. <laughs> that was a workout. I don't think one of our Jeep friends said it was going to be easy. <laughs> no one did. They actually. said it would be rewarding. All right, there it is. You know what? Yeah, it's just going to be a very, very temporary thing. Because without duels, we're not going to be able to uh, really secure it. I didn't realize that. See, this is just going to roll right off. Love that mail order. Yeah, so if you've ever done anything with cars, you know the struggle. Without the power of the delivery in this neighborhood. We're doing whatever the heck it takes to at least get these tires on here. And so you bolts are a specialized thing. Well, there's all different sizes, and I don't have any hardware that would just kind of hold it in place otherwise. So that's where we're at. Like, I really just want to see the tires on this thing. I want to see it roll on four tires. The fates are not aligning. First, our roof is leaking. The shop is destroyed by the rain. And now we got no deliveries. Good times. <laughs> you should have seen this place yesterday. The water just comes right through. Mm -hmm. That's what all that business is out there. You know what I'm going to do with these? What are you going to do with those? I'm going to save these for the next time we don't have any U-bolts in there the shop. Go. I'm going to hang them up. That's a really great idea. I was wondering if, like, people keep extra U-bolts. I'm sure. I mean, any any rational, sane person probably would. <laughs> but there I am always cutting them off, right? Let's get on to a lighter topic. Let's talk about these brand new tires. Ooh. Ah. Wow. So that's the thing, you know. We could put anything on this, but there's nothing like the real thing. So these are just reproduction CJ2 wheels. They're 16 by 4.5. And, and I chose to put the 6.00 to 616 tires on them. These will go up to 716, I think, or even bigger. But I thought. We'll keep it like the early Jeeps would have had, and I read that the CJ2 came with 600s on them. So did those rims come with those tires, or did you put the rims on? These are three separate orders, yeah. So I ordered the rims from one place. I ordered the tubes from another, because, you know, I'm Mr. Frugal, right? I'm not just going to the mm -hmm. high-priced dealer. So I shopped it on Amazon. I found four tubes, good auto tubes. Uh, the rims came from somewhere, and then the tires I found from this discount tire store. That's how I ended up at the uh, 600 measurement. These are $150 at some of the Jeep suppliers, and these were 75 bucks per tire. Nice. Half price. So let's put them on. I mean, of course, would I want the giant monster tires? Maybe, but we're making sort of a real deal. 
Well, I don't want the giant monster tire. <laughs> well, with that small engine, think about that, right? You're running a big V8 in it. Sure, anything goes. But when you have the smaller engine, you're going to want your gear ratio and just the overall weight of the thing pretty much in check. I learned that from many years Volkswagening around. Put too much tire on. You're going to know it. You know, when you can't shift in the fourth gear, it's just got nothing to give. Wouldn't that be a fun little change of pace? Did the U-Bolt come via FedEx? I don't even remember. I'm, I'm looking forward to painting this thing. <laughs> and I love the black tires and the black rims. Yeah, me too. And the tread, when you're asking, well, what do they look like? I was like, well, it's a Jeep thing. You'll see. There's kind of only one way they made them. They're super cool. This tread goes on uh, a lot of military stuff. These are just sized appropriately for the Jeep. This is funny. They got all different size lug nuts. So I'm going to go to the Jeep catalog and order the right ones. Look at it. It's like it's ready to storm the beaches mm -hmm. of Normandy. Well, that is a color I'm considering is Normandy blue. Ooh. See how I let into that? Mm hmm Mind read. Wasn't that exciting? What do you think? I love it. The proportions? Because they're tall. You said at first, wow, those are really thin tires, but they're tall. Yeah, they're super cool. This thing will zoom down that muddy road outside like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a lot of rain yesterday. And this is the road that we go down to and from our house. And we need a four-wheel drive vehicle because sometimes this road is impassable. The emphasis being M. So with any luck, all that barking you heard is the delivery of the U-bolts. I'll be right back with a yes or no response. So what are we doing, Ian? Well, first we're navigating this mud area in front of the shop. Look at that from yesterday. That's yesterday's trail out there. Doesn't look like anything today. But yesterday <laughs> it was crazy. Like we can't even drive on the other side of the house. The truck won't get through. It's that flooded. The UPS and the FedEx drivers are just, they just go for it. <laughs> they just blast down that road. Now it's way drier than what So it is now today. we're driving to the end of the driveway to see what FedEx dropped off. That looks bigger than a box of U bolts. <laughs> we got some Christmas gifts. Is it U bolts? <laughs> Nope, it's from Army Jeep Products. Ooh. Oh, we're going to have to get back into that when we get inside. All the stuff I've been doing to put the engine back together from the Toyota swap. I'm going to ask you, first and foremost, to name this part. Bell housing. It's a bell housing. Woohoo! I got it right. Thanks, Army Jeep Parts. And all these people saying, oh, he'll do anything to get sponsored. No, I paid for this. I searched. I shopped. They had one that was a takeout from a running vehicle. Yeah, you called there. They were really nice. Yeah, super cool. And the guy's like, oh, well, you're going to need a couple other parts if you're doing that. So he sent uh, a fuzzy envelope. I don't know. Not you, boys. These Jeep guys, every Jeep part I've got has candy in it. What? It's like when we order our other tickets for the, the week in the desert. Really? Oh my this gosh. This one has there Hershey's is candy Kisses. In there. The last one had Jolly Ranchers. I did not know that. That's is that a Jeep cute. thing? Is that a Jeep thing? Because I like candy. Or he just knew in my voice this guy's a newbie. We're going to start him thinking. We're going to get rumors flying. <laughs> so, all right. A little progress. We're going to leave those clamps on the axle just to roll it out under that body. But we got a bell housing. Heck yes. Yeah, so good use bell housing. Heart. Uh-oh. I'll take that one. 
All right, nice little field trip. Back, Back to, to the shack. Back to the shack. You got a nice bell housing shipped in all the way from Pennsylvania. Lickety split through, through mud, sleet, snow. We only get one U bolt. The three <laughs> are somewhere else in the universe. <laughs> Another interesting thing back here is we have a really small designated parking spot that's accessible during the rain. Like we have to park on this little cement pad, otherwise you're going under, going in the quicksand. All right, so we're getting a little progress. The uh, transmission stuff I wanted to discuss is here. And a lot of people chimed right in who knew Jeeps. This is what was in there for the Toyota. Guys are like, no way, dude, that's not Jeep. And look here, see that? Mm -hmm. That's where they welded. That's a little area. And see the extra weld here? Mm -hmm. So this is what the Jeep looks like. They're identical. This one's a little bit shorter, but the splines, you can see, completely different. Yeah. And I checked this. This goes right into that engine we have with that clutch disc. I got the <laughs> shaft, I got some bearings, and I got some gaskets. Look, Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers. I told you. Oh no, that's a lemon head and a Jolly Ranger. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's cool. If anybody knows about this, please chime in. Because I want to. Shout out to Kaiser Willie's Auto Supply. I want to be part of the Jeep Club. Yeah, so they sent us some bearings. I recognized these when I opened that transmission up. Uh, a bunch of little doohickeys, thingamabobs, a couple little ball bearings. I'm going to be sure to misplace. And all these needle bearings. Remember, oh, I was taking yeah, it apart, and yeah. I said, you don't want to lose those. So, look, they gave us freshies. Big and littles. And then there's a little oil slinger thing that goes inside. So, yeah, we are set to rehab this. I'm sure these ball bearings are uh, in whatever I took apart out there. So, I'll try not to lose them. Actually, let me put a magnet on them. So cool, I think that just about covers the parts we've received. Let's roll this under that chassis. Let's roll the chassis under the body and see what we're working with. All right, so we're gonna drop her down and see what does or doesn't line up. This lift is really slow when it's cold out, too. So we read that this is only a one-inch difference in wheelbase, but what I saw when we first lined it up is they were very different. So I think what we're going to do is let this body set down, and then we're going to put the lift under the chassis and lift the whole kit together just to see what we're dealing with with body mounts. There it is. So somebody said the frames were wider too. So even though they say the chassis is only one inch difference, I see a big mismatch in the wheelbase. Big, big mismatch. But I just want to see if any of the body mounts on the rear side of this jive. I've never looked under here, but it looks pretty cool. So this is what we're looking at. Just seeing if anything in this chassis is kind of misaligned. And I see a bolt, oh look, a body bolt right here lines up. Right there. Yep. Yep, this one too. Cool. Let me see. Yep, yeah. come on over here. So see this structure? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit off, but see? See the bolt hole? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So we just got to shift this a little bit forward. Let me grab the big squeezers. That's what I was hoping to see is some reference. So this is really good news because I didn't know what we were getting into. So the fact that they do sort of match up. Just made that fitting sound. Then look here. Oh, and look, the, there's no mount here. We're gonna have to fix that. Where? There's a hole with a broken bolt. We're gonna have to build a mount. 
Interesting. Well, we know that that's where it sits. The wheel looks proper in the opening. Oh yeah, look, bolts here too. Right here. Nice. That one goes in that hole. So yeah, the whole body's gotta shift over just a little bit, but very close. Yeah, so we got two, four, six bolts that line up. Amazing. That's good news. That is good news. And then these back here. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything that looks like it goes through the body there. So we'll have to look at that. So again, just model year difference for sure. They're different years. It just looks like this has got to shift over just, just a little bit. I'll do that on the floor of the shop. I don't want to go shaking this too much while it's up here. Yeah. The front is really the difference then. <clears throat> just look at the fenders and look at the tires. The tires are way forward. Mm -hmm. Very flat through here. And you have bolts that should go here, but no holes in the chassis. So you can definitely bolt to that. And this is kind of what I was thinking. It's like, well, do we kind of clip it? We just take this cut it and bring the wheels into position? I don't know. I mean, anything can happen. It's physically a bigger nose, but will the engine fit lengthwise? Uh, Height-wise, definitely no. So uh, it looks very simple to make this happen. It's all about the looks now. You can see these things, look, you got holes here, two holes, look, that'll bolt right in. Mm -hmm. A little out of shape, but those actually line up. So I guess I guess we can do whatever we want. My whole thing is I just don't want to cut a hole through the top. Is this a surprise you're ready to drop? Yes. <laughs> Well, I'm going to lower this down. So we can do anything. And yeah, I want to keep the classic look of it, but make it custom with a K. Because could you clip the chassis and bring the chassis in a little bit? You can do whatever the heck I want. And then the engine will still fit in there? We don't know that. Wow. Hmm. Well, the one thing Jamie and I were discussing, somebody, one of the commenters on Insta or something, said, you know, they made a high hood Jeep. Yeah, because they made a few in-between models that had the overhead valve engine and the flat fender style body. So they added here and then they added here. See how it comes apart? Very similar to the Model A Ford with the gas tank here. But it looks like this piece had like a riser and a riser there. That's all they did. So it's, I looked it up on Wikipedia and uh, the Motor Trends uh, article that I'm going to put, drop the link in the description of the video. It was a CJ3B. All these numbers. I know it's so neat though. I was stuck though. on R two D two and C three PO. <laughs> now we got C three. So did we show the engine that we got? When Chris dropped it off, he saw that overhead valve engine. Yeah. But looking in here, there's a lot of room. So maybe that was because the hurricane. Jamie always gets me on this because I'm from the East Coast and I say a hurricane. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it's a hurricane. It's a hurricane engine. Hurricane. Hurricane might fit in here just fine. <laughs> we'll see. So that's what's up next. I'm going to get that engine. We're going to, I think the next thing we're going to do is like engine teardown and transmission rehab because we're going to have to mock something up before we do anything more. But we're going to build the custom body. It's going to purely represent Jeep stuff, but we're going to hand make it a little bit modern drivetrain in a flat fender Jeep. Yeah, so basically custom with a K and no cutting the this part of the body because I wanted that to stay put. No holes through the hood.
Yeah, because the valve cover would be sticking up above mm -hmm. for sure. So there's no engine mounts in this. If I have to reposition it a little bit, I, you know, I could mess with the transmission mount. I don't know. We're going to have to mock all that up and kind of half and half it, see what we got. As long as we got room for a radiator in front of that fan, you can put that engine anywhere. So we're going to upgrade the steering too. I want to do, I think, a cross steer or something is what it's called. So it's going to have a winch on the front. So these big frame horns coming out, I think it's cool. You got yeah, a big I want shelf something here. with a winch. It's going to have a full on winch right here. And we're going to get rid of this. Because I know that's not original to Right, it. and with the high hood, we're going to have to stretch the grill shell. I know all this stuff is available, but we want to make it. Because yeah. we might... Maybe we stretch out the fender a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It looks a little awkward. Uh, the front looks cool. This looks weird to me. Yeah. So we're going to have to get creative in that area. Maybe we can shorten the chassis. That'll solve it right there. So I don't know. I like the idea of having a little more horsepower. The, the bigger transmission, I'm assuming, it's a T90. So, yeah, we'll just get into it. Now we got a roller. It's pretty cleaned up and disassembled. Ready for action. Jamie's Jeep. 